Hey guys, Prowl1701 here, and today we're going to be reviewing part one of Monster of Peladon with the third Doctor. This is the first time that I have ever seen Monster of Peladon, but I really enjoyed Curse of Peladon, which I've seen multiple times. So I've been looking forward to this. It was sent to me on DVD recently by uh, one of my patrons, Unknown Don't Trust Numbers, who also goes by the secret identity, Unknown289. Normally, he doesn't let that get out. It's a secret, but he told me because he knows how good I am at keeping secrets. No one will ever find out. Uh, but I enjoyed Monster of Peladon Part 1. Uh, my favorite part, well, the interesting thing, before I started watching the story, this amused me. Because I was sitting here thinking, I don't know if I'm going to get it, I don't know if I'm going to watch it all in one day or not. Four parts, four parts. Maybe I'll do two parts today and two parts tomorrow. I'm off tomorrow. And then I went straight to the episode selection, and the first thing in my mouth was, oh, it's six episodes. Well, that's the PG version of what, what I said. Because I had forgotten Monsters of Peladon is six episodes. I know curses, but for some reason, I had it in my head, Monsters of Peladon was four episodes. So literally out loud, I was like, it's six episodes. It probably won't all get done today. But then I really thoroughly enjoyed part one. Let me say right off the bat, I love Sarah Jane in this. Oh my god, I love Sarah Jane in this story. She is not having any of it. <laughs> she is not, she's got the doctor pretty figured out at this point. I love she's not having any of it. You know, when they don't arrive or the doctor expected them to arrive, I like how she's not a bit surprised. She's like, oh look, we're not where you thought we were gonna be. Pardon me while I stand here in shock and astonishment. You mean this isn't where you meant to go? I gasp. <laughs> I love Sarah Jane in this. And then when she's picking at him about being lost, he's like, well, two reasons. First, I want to speak to my friend, the king. She's like, eh, name dropping. Okay. <laughs> Second, we're lost. And he's like, it's all right. Once a couple guards find us, we'll be all right. And then those guards that are hunting for aliens that aren't supposed to be there are like, hey, there they are. And of course, the doctor's like, oh, it's okay. And Sarah Jane's like, I don't think. And then she takes, she just runs. I love the fact that she just takes off. You know, normally I think of Sarah Jane, if the doctor says it's okay, she'll think it's okay. Nope, she just gone. And even the doctor's like, Sarah. <laughs> and he has to run. Sarah's over there like, nope, nope. Nope, they don't look friendly to me. You don't run to somebody going, there they are! <laughs> Sarah's like, exit, stage left. <laughs> I love that. And then when they get brought before, like, the queen, uh, and they're forced to kneel down, Sarah's trying to get back up, like, what the? <laughs> and then, like, when they try to talk to her, she's like, I do not. She's like, I wasn't speaking to you. I was speaking to your master. And she's Sarah's not having that for no. <laughs> I like when she gets back up. She's like, he is not my <laughs> I love how feisty Sarah Jane is in this story. I love it. And then when Alpha Centauri is like, I do not recognize the female, but she's of no consequence. Sarah's like, and then at the end, when they're dismissed to go, she's like, oh, I'd like an apology. And, you know, the doctor's having to kind of grab her arm like, come on, please. <laughs> I loved that. I just, it's interesting because, you know, Sarah's toned down a little more in like 13 and 14. Now, part of this could just be she's a little more comfortable with the doctor. And, of course, she's with the fourth doctor now in those seasons. Um, but I, I feel like if you compare, especially her last two stories, like Mask of Mandragora and Hand of Fear, I don't feel like she's written as well. She doesn't seem quite as independent. She gets hypnotized in both stories. She feels more like a companion that's there, whereas in this story, I love her individuality streak. In a lot of season 11, and even in some of the other seasons as well, like especially like in Robot, you know, I love how independent she is and how strong she is and how strong-willed she is and how not having any of it she is. I had forgotten sometimes just how much better she seems written at times in some of these earlier stories um, where, I mean, she's always great. Sarah Jane's my favorite companion. 
but I sometimes feel like she has, she feels more fleshed out in this story thus far than she does say in some of her last few stories before she left. And I love it. Plus I like her kind of more business-like appearance. Her hair is done up a little more like a journalist. The outfit she's wearing feels a little more professional, uh, not quite as casual as she would wear later. I like that. I really am enjoying Sarah Jane in this. Uh, the doctor is good in this. I love his outfit, that green jacket he's wearing. I want that jacket. That jacket looks fantastic. He looks fabulous in that. Uh, the story, at least thus far, kind of feels like a retread of Curse. I don't know. I don't know if Monster of Peladon has a reputation of being a retread of Curse or not. You know, I try to kind of avoid stuff like that so I can go in as blind as possible. Now, I knew it took place 50 years after Curse, and I know that the king has passed away and that his daughter's taken over. The actress playing her, I haven't made up my mind if I like her yet. Like, I haven't decided if I think she's a good actress yet. Like, I'm just, a little bit I've listened to her, I'm like, I can't decide if she's doing a good job or not. And then the guy who's kind of her right-hand man kind of reminds me of the traitor's right-hand man from Curse. So I'm watching him the whole time going, I expect him to be the one kind of behind everything. I don't know. <laughs> or maybe it's just trying to make me think that, to pull like a 180 on. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I liked the cliffhanger. I did enjoy the cliffhanger with the little, what looked like the statue, like the glowing version of the... Uh, statue of the the creature i forget what it's called kind of going forward and the guy disappearing that's a neat effect uh i enjoy that and then i i liked it so far there was one other thing oh of course i love seeing alpha centauri back i know it's the same actress voicing alpha centauri who voiced alpha in uh curse of Pella, and then came out of retirement and came back and voiced alpha at the end of empress of mars which i love i can never pronounce her name because I know it begins with a Y, and there's like an S and some N's, and I have no idea how to pronounce that name, but she's great as Alpha. I enjoy that. So yeah, I liked part one. I think I'll probably get into part two pretty quickly. Um, I had forgotten this was six parts, so it might take me a little longer to get through. But I did enjoy part one very much, even if it does kind of feel, at least thus far, like a retread of Curse. So I want to know what you think of part one of Monster of Peladon. So comment down below and let me know. I also have a uh, P.O. box if there's anything you would like to send me, as this was sent to me by one of my subscribers and patrons, Unknown Don't Trust Numbers. Uh, that's down in the description, as is a link to my Amazon wish list. If you would like to take a look at that, I update it uh, fairly often. I also have a Patreon. If you would like to support me that way, there is a link to that down in the description below. That does help me keep bills paid, so I'd appreciate if you'd check that out. I want to give a shout out to some of my top tier patrons, Stephen Crane, Finn Perkins, and Colin Coney. I appreciate their support, as I do the support of all of my patrons. And if you enjoy my content, if you've enjoyed this review and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That helps me out. I, my goal is to reach 1,000 subscribers in 2023 for Doctor Who's 60th anniversary. That is my goal to reach sometime this year. And don't forget to click that thumbs up button. That helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Most importantly, thank you for watching.